that's me. <laughs> a really happy day. I had just marched from Philadelphia to DC with Democracy Spring. And in that moment, I said, oh my gosh, what I've wanted all my life is actually happening. A democracy movement, and I'm part of it. I was ecstatic. And then the months rolled on, and we got to November. And I was in shock. I was in deep shock. <laughs> but I also know that shock can reveal some tough truths if we can face them. And so I had to face it that a lot of voters were less concerned about gerrymandering than jobs, less concerned about voter oppression than their own economic oppression. So it was a tough realization, a tough realization. Um, so what I realized is that I shouldn't have been surprised at all. Because in fact, I knew, I knew that wages had been stuck, stuck virtually for half a century, right? For regular workers. And I also knew that poverty is so extreme in our country today that half of our newborns must depend on public aid to eat. And at the same time over this period, CEO pay has leapt 16 fold. So, um, clearly, clearly, um, um, I could see that a political system that was rigged brought us <laughs> the 2016 returns, but I also knew that our rigged economy played a role. So, um, what, what then, you know, what are the lessons that we can learn from this? This is what I, I've been trying to sort out. And I realized that democracy is always in danger. If we have not yet grasped the essence of democracy, the essence of democracy is not elections plus a market. It is a culture. It is a culture that is creating the three conditions that through our long evolution of our species have proven to bring out the best in us and to keep the worst in check. What are those three conditions? They are widely dispersed power, so that we all have a voice. They are transparency in public affairs. And finally, mutual accountability, not the blame game, the blame game that we're trapped in today. So why, um, what is, where are we? Where are we in this? We see that in fact we are going in the opposite direction, right? Take, Take that condition one, power. Do you know that just three Americans today control as much wealth as half of all of us? So we are moving in the opposite direction. And why do we tolerate it? Why do we tolerate it? That's the key. And I think it's that we're taught that all we can really count on is our selfish nature. And so we trust that we can put our self-interest to work through the three, the free market, the free market, and it will sort out winners and losers for us. Problem there, really? <laughs> there is no such thing as a free market. Ours has one big rule. Do what brings highest return to existing wealth. So wealth accrues to wealth accrues to wealth. And yet, the myth hangs on. And what is that myth telling us, the idea of the free market hangs on, telling us that if we're not making it, it's our fault. It's our fault, we're to blame. And I think that that message definitely played a role in creating the fear, the humiliation, the loneliness that then creates a culture of blame and shame. That culture of blame and shame then sets us up to embrace a president who tells us whom to blame. Now. The good news is that our democracy movement, our democracy movement understands that the essence of democracy is dignity. Yes, in the polling place, but also in all dimensions of our life. And the most exciting thing for me is that now what is emerging is a movement of movements across the dimensions that allow us to live in dignity. And I just want to mention a couple of stories here. 
you met the wonderful Wendy Fields this morning. The a democracy initiative embodies the movement of movements. Now, 63 organizations representing 30 million Americans, from the NAACP to Greenpeace to AFL-CIO, truly a movement of movements. Take a state, a very gutsy state of North Carolina. North Carolina has come together over more than a decade to create what they call fusion politics. Exactly this idea of coming together across issues, 14-point agenda they all agreed on, ultimately 2 million people uniting 200 organizations, many accomplishments. But I was particularly struck that in 2016, to the surprise of many, they helped with others, but they were part of the key to unseating a governor who had trampled on voting rights. So North Carolina deserves a big shout out. Let me jump to a city, a national, state, a city. This city has a dear place in my heart. It's where I wrote Diet for a Small Planet. Richmond, California, across the bay from San Francisco. 80% people of color, working, working class, for more than a century under the heel of big oil, of Chevron, who stacked their city council and diverted resources away from what people really needed. But then, a movement of movements locally came together in an interracial citizens alliance that in 2006, I believe it was, they won a few seats on the city council. But what was amazing, they came together, the steel workers, the uh, immigrant rights people, uh, environmental rights people, they came together to put forward a slate in 2016 and they defeated a Chevron backed slate with three, uh, two million or two, three million dollars backing it, they defeated it and won a majority on the city council in Richmond. And they were able to pass then one of the highest minimum wages in California and public financing for elections. Yes. So, um, <laughs> these stories, and there's so many more, they are weaving together the various dimensions of our lives that address the very pain that led many people to vote for Donald Trump. They address that pain. And the real lesson for our democracy movement is that it can uh, address people's need for dignity because democracy is the very essence of di dignity. Only democracy meets people's need, deep need, for power that is a voice, for meaning in our lives, and for connection with one another. Democracy is the essence of dignity. So, of course, I believe now that democracy can't be sliced up in parts because human dignity cannot be. Dignity is dignity. And as our democracy movement nourishes human, human dignity, we are unstoppable. Thank you. Thank you.